Welcome. I'm Pastor Connie Winter Yulberg, and I wanted to talk to you about a home altar. So, a home altar is a place where you can go and that you know that this is a sacred place in your home, in your apartment, wherever you are, in your dorm room, um, that where you pray, read scripture, um, where you read a devotional, um, and where you meditate. There's a lot of different things that can be in a home altar. There'd be a, a lit candle, if you are allowed to do that where you're at. I know that some dorms you can't do that, or if you're in, um, in a hospital, or if you're in a hotel room, that doesn't work. But there are a lot of other things that do work. You'll see here that, like, for instance, I have this. This is a, this is a olive wood carving of Jesus carrying the cross. Um, any small cross would also do too if you'd like to have one of those. I also put in there because I love rocks, and so I have this this geode to different sides to it. Um, it reminds me of God's creation, so that's why this is on this altar. And um, I have an icon one of my one of my friends made. This is an icon of Jesus as he is talking to the bent over woman, and I really like it because it reminds me of this Bible story. I also have on here what's called a God box. And so if I have something special that I'm turning over to God, it seems really heavy on my own shoulders or something that I don't feel like I can handle at that point, I'm just turning it over to God. And so I write it down on a piece of paper and I put it in this little jar, put the lid on it, and then I put it on my altar. Then I go back. And I can take it back out. I can pray about it again. Uh, or I can take it out and say, mm, okay, God answered that prayer. So I don't need to have it in the God box anymore. This is also a place where uh, your daily devotions can go. Like, for instance, if you use Christ in our home, um, that can be a, a daily devotional that you put here. Also, you might want to put your gather magazine if that's something that you get. Um, here, I get these from the ELCA. So this one talks about world hunger and also Lutheran disaster response. So those are all really important things to understand and they provide a whole lot of things that I can pray for. So these are great to be on an altar. So why do you have one? So understanding that God is truly everywhere. And so you can talk to God at church. You can talk to God in your home. And the location of your home also can be anywhere. It can be a part of your dining room table or your kitchen table or part of a counter. It can be a small end table. Um, sometimes people put, um, you know, put them any, anywhere. Sometimes they're movable. Of course, you can put them in different places. It can be um, on right by your bed if you have an end table or, a, or some kind of table by your bed. It can be large or it can be very small. It can be in the middle of your, your, your dining room table or the small kitchen table that you have. You can put a candle right in the middle and that can be really your home altar. Sometimes people bring in some flowers or herbs or something that just to adorn their table or around that candle or um, um, around whatever is in the center. It could be the center is your God box or whatever you have. So choose items that are really important to you. Now, these are what I have for, on this home altar right at this point. So, it, but it can be anything. I change it out all the time. So I'm actually in my office right now, but I have a home altar too at, at my house. And um, that's my special place that I do my devotions. And it's just a quiet, make it a quiet place. Um, uh, and that is a good way to start the day. So choose items that are great for you. Sometimes I put pictures of my family that can be important um an object that was really important um for someone in my family so i have um, lots of relatives that have died and so sometimes it's just an object that has that was important to them or it's um a little devotion that was something a little devotional card that they really like and so i keep it up and that that goes there so a home altar is a great way to be able to say, okay, this is the place, this is the location in my home that is, that I say that it is for God. And that I remind myself that I am, um, I can go to this spot at any time and I can pray and I can talk to God. 
Also, a home altar is a great place where you can have some kind of, you can do communion. And so what I've done here is put a little bit of wine in this chalice, but you can use anything. Use a jelly glass, anything that you have. It doesn't have to be fancy. Um, this is um, actually one that was made for me. So um, I have that. And any kind of plate, uh, any, any small plate that you have, just put some bread or crackers or tortillas or whatever you have. Um, so here I, I took, um, so I'm gluten-free. So this is part of a gluten-free wafer. So that's, in, that's important for me. And uh, this, of course, is one of the wafers that we use and that I use when I'm videotaping the worship services. But we also have these. So these are just little things that I take when I'm visiting people. And so there's juice at the bottom and then there's, uh, there's something that plastic that covers it up. And then there's also a little wafer at the top. And so I can take off that and take out the wafer and give it to the person and say, this is the body of Christ broken for you. And with the juice, I just open that section up and give them the little cup and say, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Home altars are a great way of being able to say, yes, I want to be able to remember what Jesus did for me. And remember that it is uh, the Reformation taught us that really that we are the priesthood of all believers. And so that if you are feeling down, and if you're feeling that not connected to God, communion is a good way to just pause and say, wow. Let me say those words, those important words that were said. So Jesus took the bread in the night in which he was betrayed, and he gave the bread to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Eat of this in remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of this in remembrance of me. May this meal be a blessing to you. Be a blessing to your day as you remember the gifts that Jesus gave to you and to all of us. Amen.